Good morning, folks. We've got more eruptive activity on the sun with several outbursts overnight. We'll peek in on the ozone science and see a new textbook continuing the trend of recognizing the sun. But let's start with the last 24 hours on our star and we find that dark coronal hole is directly facing Earth. And then at the end of the sequence, several flare and filament eruptions occur on the northern incoming limb. Flaring reached up into M-class range. There were three primary coronal mass ejections from that area. Let's zoom in to get a better look. It's clearly two magnetic field breakouts at an active region followed by a filament eruption nearby, destabilized by the flare. SOHO coronagraphs show the multiple eruptive events, including a stealth CME that went off the south beforehand. Those big eruptions overnight are not aimed at Earth, but that region is turning in to face us over the weekend. We're watching that active area again here in 304 angstroms. It was a triple blast. You may even be able to see how the first two flare-driven eruptions look different than the filament release that followed. We'll continue watching that area as it turns in to face the Earth. A bit of an explosive way to kick off the Thanksgiving holiday. The sun is unlikely to just immediately go silent after such a display, so eyes open. Up first in the articles today is one on the continuing issues with the ozone. The mainstream articles have been focusing on wildfires or the Tonga volcanic eruption, but we have already shown why those cannot be to blame for the exceedingly large ozone holes of late and how they keep happening. The continued massive ozone losses at the polar regions, in fact, are precisely where the solar particles are allowed to more easily enter the Earth system as our magnetic field weakens. Good luck finding that on CNN, however. And in that same vein, another detailed study here shows how the weather patterns in the polar vortex can help to understand the ozone columns. What's interesting is that they note that solar activity impacts the polar vortex, and they also discuss El Nino and La Nina, which previous studies have shown is significantly modulated by that same solar activity, which again has an easier road to the atmosphere now that we are in a geomagnetic excursion and magnetic pole shift. Lastly, folks, another textbook at university level is taking on the solar forcing issue. We've seen a number of these recently, and it's very nice to watch the scientists include these forcing factors, especially since we can't seem to get them properly represented in the global climate models. Cheers to that team there. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.